Sometimes I don't know where to roam, but I heard of a city called heaven, and I started to make it my home. My name is Maya Angelo. I grew up in dirt roads just like this in a southern state in the United States of America. I was a mute. I was poor and black and female. And the only key I had which would open the door to the world for me was a book. I read everything. I fell in love with poetry. And amazingly, in a small village, a hamlet in Arkansas, I met Robert Burns. That is why I'm so excited about looking at Robert Burns in his own place in Asher. This stage of the journey excites me and, in a way, frightens me because I have yet to meet the Scots Burnsians. Dr. Angelou, welcome to us in Dundonald. Mm -hmm. Welcome as a Burnsian, a Burns enthusiast, <laughs> where we are Burnsians here. Thank you very much. Thank you. Can I take you to a seat? Will there be dancing? I know that this is a cotter's place where Robert Burns was born, a small home. And I know something about small homes. I grew up in a town so small, and in a house so small that when I look at it now, when I think about it now, I bow my head. I know what it is like to come through a a poor upbringing, for I had a poor upbringing. We didn't have the richest of fabrics to wear, just as Burns and his family 
were without those particular things, but we were rich in other things. We had loving families. I had a loving grandmother. Robert Burns had a loving father. And I love to read about Robert Burns' father on a gathering on Saturday night, speaking about the Bible. The cheerful supper done with serious face, they run the angle form a circle wide. The sire turns over with patriarchal grace, the big hall Bible, yinst his father's pride. His bonnet reverently is laid aside, his lyre half its wearing thin and bare. Those trains that once did sweet in Zion glide, he wails a portion with judicious care, and let us worship God, he says, with solemn air. Well, my grandmother was the same. I mean, we read the Bible, or she read to us, to me and my brother, on Saturday night. And then on days when I'd ask her to sing, she would say, oh, sister, you know, Mama can't sing. But if I left her alone, she had the rich, beautiful voice. If I left her alone, she'd sing to herself and to God. I shall not, I shall not be removed. I shall not, I shall not be removed. At the time, I was a mute. I didn't speak at all, so I would take a tablet from my belt, and I would write, Mama, it is not removed. My grandmother would put her spectacles on. She'd read that and give me back the tab tablet and say, I know, sister, I know. And then she'd sing again. I shall not, I shall not be removed. I shall not. I shall not be removed just like a tree that's planted by the water. Oh, I shall not uh, be removed. I'm sure that that was the sensation that Robert Burns' father gave to his children so that on a Saturday night, they were reassured, they were reaffirmed as being people who were loved and people who were being cared for and even people who were being prepared for a rich and wonderful life out of the what may seem to be the meanness of this little room. Great dreams sprang. Professor Cohen, I'm, I'm overwhelmed at this a mass of riches to have a chance in the Burns room, in the Mitchell Library, to be surrounded by Burns, immersed. <laughs> Here before you is a Kilmarnock edition, an original. This is virtually all of the poetry that Burns published in his lifetime. That's amazing. You know? It really <laughs> is. I, I love to think about that Kilmarnock edition. This, this. <laughs> I don't even want to touch it. I, I hope my eyes don't make the, the print fade or something. It's, it's looking. I feel about poetry as if I'm, I'm approaching the Holy Grail. Mm. And when I was very young, I, I was a mute from the time I was oh, seven till I was almost 13. Mm. I had, I had uh, suffered terrible abuse, sexual abuse. And when I told the name of the violator, uh, in two days the man was put in jail, released, and found dead. Mm. And I thought my voice had killed him, so I stopped speaking. And then someone, a wonderful lady, 
a black lady in my little village introduced me to poetry. I couldn't believe it. Mm -hmm. It was so lovely. And Mrs. Flowers took me to the school library and said I had to read every book. I don't say I understood every book, but I read every book. He too had a mentor in, uh, in John Murdoch. Yes. Um, when Burns was quite young, he had two mentors, actually. I suppose his father. His father, yes. Who um, insisted that the boys obtain a, a good education and actually tried to educate them himself. Yes. And how do your students react to Burns? Well, they love it. They, they say at first, Oh, I don't, Dr. Angelo, ah, uh, uh, many of them are Southern. I just don't think so. I, I don't know what it means. And so when I teach, for instance, a man to man driver, when I come to the verse, which is, you see young Berkey, kind of lad, what struts and stares and all that. I said, now think of Berkey as a jerk, okay? <laughs> <laughs> when I was very young, in Arkansas, I heard a voice on radio that just made me weep. I'd never heard a voice more beautiful. And it was Miss Marian Anderson, the black lady who did eventually sing in the Met. And she sang, If Allah see me to Ladi coming through the rye, and Allah see kiss a laddie, need a laddie, lassie cry, every lassie ha a lad, and so forth. And that's Burns. All right, you saw the slave's lament. Robert Burns died in 1796. He had never gone to Africa. He had never gone to what was just becoming the United States. And here, 200 years ago, this man wrote this poem. What think you, Miss Martin? He has gone beyond his race, his culture, and his class, and gone so deep into what a slave must have felt. And I think it's amazing considering where he was and who he was. What I like most about this poem that he was able to speak of just like the simple thing about being taken away from your home. So this poem seems to me a perfect example of the ways in which a poet transcends race, time, and space. Here's the poem. It was in sweet Senegal that my foes did me enthrall. For the lands of Virginia, Virginia, oh, torn from that lovely shore, and must never see it more, and alas, I am weary, weary, oh. He had this notion that he would be remembered. He even said one time, I think jocularly, people will be holding dinners in my honor. <laughs> <laughs> he also had this sense, of course, that he, he recognized that somewhere in himself, he would one day become a greater poet ever prophesied or dreamed. And I'm wondering if you had a similar feeling at some point. Yes, I did. I, I was pretty sure by the time I was 12, that I was going to be a success in something. I expected I would be a successful real estate broker. <laughs> I would have my own briefcase. I would wear shoes and with matching purses. And, and I would have gloves, nice suede gloves. Thank you. <laughs> the rock cries out to us clearly, forcefully, come. You may stand upon my back and face your distant destiny, but seek no haven in my shadow. I will give you no hiding place. This is where the Kilmarnock edition was published. It is amazing what 
success can do for a person. I mean, we can see what that Kilmarnock edition did for Robert Burns, because it was a runaway success. He was able to say no to plans to go to Jamaica. I just can't imagine Robert Burns in Jamaica, a man who loved fairness, loved justice, who was fired, made passionate by injustice, and who struggled against cruelties, who was able, in fact, to write a poem called The Slave's Lament about my people, and he had never once left Scotland. The burden I must bear While the cruel scourge I fear In the lands of Virginia, Virginia, oh. And I think on friends most dear With a bitter, bitter tear And alas, I am weary, weary Scots were he, where Wallace bled, Scots from Bruce's aft led. Welcome to your gory bed, or to victory. News the day and news the hour, see the front of battle lure, see approach proud Edward's purr, chains and slavery. Or would be a traitor knave, or would fill a coward's grave. Was it base as be a slave, let him turn and flee. What for Scotland's king and law, freedom's sword would strangle and draw. Freeman stand or freeman fall, let him follow me. Woes and pains, bear sons and servile chains. We would drain our dearest veins, but they shall be free. Lay the proud usurpers low, tyrants fall in every foe, liberties and every blow. Let us day or day. It was for Wallace and the movement and the struggle for freedom that Robert Burns wrote, Scots Wahai. It is a, a feeling, there's a thrill around this place as there's a thrill in any place in the world, any geographical location where men and women have struggled, sometimes won, sometimes lost the battle for freedom. Freedom is such an impulse in the human spirit that it is understandable from Birmingham, Alabama to Birmingham, Britain, from Dumfries in Scotland to Dunbar in Ohio. But I have a dream. My poor little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I have a dream today. I worked with Martin Luther King as his northern representative, and I was a friend and sister to Malcolm X. The African-American struggle for freedom reminds me all the time of the struggle for freedom all over the world. So it is because of my identification with Robert Burns, with Wallace, with the people of Scotland, for their dignity, for their independence, for their humanity, that I can see how we sing. We shall overcome, 
We shall overcome, we shall overcome someday. I don't really know how people survive without music. People in stress, really, in the middle of a struggle, somehow write some of the most beautiful music. I'm, I'm convinced that music not only brings us together, but it holds us aloft. And I write, I write music for a lot of different singers, for Miss Roberta Flack and B.B. King. Mm -hmm. I write with Quincy Jones, contemporary music. But there's a line which, again, reminds me of the universality of uh, music and our need for it. It's a 19th century as gospel song. When it looked like the sun wasn't gonna shine anymore, God put a rainbow in the sky, in the clouds, in the very clouds. Pretty? Fantastic. Yeah. So the music then that I, I lean back on whether I'm here talking to you in this incredible castle, these old stones surrounded by people who look very different from me, or if I'm in Asia or in South Carolina, I know that when I'm feeling most weak, I can lean back on the music. Mm -hmm. Well, what we wanted to do was actually let you hear some of some of the, the sort of best loved or best known songs or just really a variety of the kind of songs to show the diversity of, of Burns's musical year and how, how music was important to him. And we wanted to start off with one of the, the earliest love songs that he wrote, um, which is called Corn Rigs. It's oh, very well known. Yes. So Eddie's now going to, to sing Corn Rigs. Thank you very much. I'm looking forward. <laughs> The sky was blue, the wind was still, the moon was shining clearly. Oh, I said, the moon where I get well, I mind the rigs, oh, Bali, oh. I can't her help as I mind, she loved me most sincerely, oh. I kissed her o'er and o'er again, I mind the rigs, oh, Bali, oh. Oh, rigs in Bali, rigs, oh, oh, rigs are funny, oh. I'll never forget that happy. A heavy bite, me comrades dear. A heavy nearly drinking, no. A heavy joyful gathering dear. A heavy happy thinking, no. But all the pleasures that I saw were three times double clearly, oh. That happy necklace was them all. I'm a hungry we are
now Jill Bowman is going to sing uh, Green Grow the Rashies O. And this is a really interesting, it's another Burns love song. It was initially a, a body song um, which Burns collected, but he wrote, uh, he wrote words that weren't quite so sexy. But it's still, it's, still a very, it's still a very important song because it's really a song about how much Burns loved women. Mm, I like that. And it's, and it's, <laughs> and it's great. still may fly them all though at last they catch them fast and that hearts can not enjoy them green grow the rushes oh green grow the rushes oh the sweetest hours that ever I spent were spent from one of Burns' earliest love songs, but although the, the majority of the songs he wrote were love songs, he was a very good political writer as well, as you know yourself. Um, so Dick's now going to sing one of his most famous um, Scottish national songs, uh, Sick a Parcel of Rogues in a Nation, written after the union of the parliaments with England when I think a lot of people felt we were, we were sold a bit. So, Dick. Per wheel te our scantish Per wheel our ancient glory. Per wheel in ter scantish name. Say fame than martial story. No sargrins am where the salt we sands and tweed runs to the ocean. Tain mark war and glance province stands. Sick a parcel of rogues in a nation. Oh, what e'er I had seen the day that treason thus could sell us. My all grey he'd had lain and play with Bruce and loyal Wallace. But Perth and poor Tell my last hour I'll make this declaration War bought and sold for English gold It's like a parcel of rogues in a nation That is exactly it. That's what I mean. That human beings are more alike than we are unalike. There are the sellers and there are the sold. And sometimes the sellers get sold. 
<laughs> the bastards. <laughs> Our people, for centuries, were obliged to laugh when they weren't tickled and to scratch when they didn't itch. And when I listen to Barons and read Barons and see that, that cutting edge, which we see in Twa Dogs, I, I think of one I wrote for a woman who rides a bus in New York City. She's a maid. I used to watch her because she'd laugh. But when I really looked at her, she wasn't laughing. She was simply extending her lips and making a sound. <laughs> and I realized, oh, I see. That's that survival apparatus. 70 years in these folks' world, the child I works for calls me girl. And I say, yes, ma'am, for working sake. I'm too proud to bend. I'm too poor to break. So I laugh <laughs> until my stomach ache when I think about myself. And my folks can make me split my side. I laughed so hard, I nearly died. The tales they tell sound just like lying. They grow the fruit, but eat the rind. <laughs> I laugh until I start to cry when I think about myself and my folks and the little children. But then, we wear the mask. who have problems that need solving and burdens that need lifting. Is he light in your darkness? Is he hope in your despair? Is he joy in your sorrow? Is he peace in your confusion? Is he resurrection in your death? Is he deliverance in your captivity? Let there be Jesus. Jesus is the light, light of the world. He's a in the soul. Then a final distinction shall be made between the righteous and the wicked. The one shall be rewarded, the other punished. To the contentious and disobedient, indignation and wrath, tribulation and anguish. Well, <laughs> not very pleasant, that kind of thing, is it? <laughs> Although I suppose some of the sermons in those days were like that in the time of Burns. I'm know? sure they were, and I, I can understand why Burns and a number of other people either rushed from church to get into devil men <laughs> or didn't come to church at all. I mean, that is so scary. Yeah. 
it's, um, it's interesting because among African Americans, we tend to praise and worship a kind God. And I think it must have come from slavery, yes, where so. all the yes. people around us were so cruel that we fashioned a God who was kind yes. and loving and forgiving. The power of the church was tremendous in those days, though. They had great control over the people. Indeed, it was very hard to get on in society if you weren't active within the church or a good attender. That's why he wrote that but the greatest satirical poet, isn't it? Holy Willie's Prayer, a real swipe at all that hypocrisy. I don't think it's a kind of comical poem. I think it's serious, and because it's serious and showing the truth, it comes up as funny. Yes, yes. You know? it's fine to be funny, too. I think he knew yes. that so well. Yeah. Sometimes um, one has to use a, a, a ploy the West Africans call blow, bite, and blow. And that means you blow on an area until it's anesthetized. Mm -hmm. You quickly bite and then blow again. And the person doesn't know he's been bitten. Right. So <laughs> that... <laughs> this is the that's of that. what Holy yeah. Willie's prayer yes, is. It it's is. blow, it bite, is. and blow. Lord, hear my earnest crying prayer against that presbytery oya. I strong wreck horn, Lord, mark it bear upon their heads and bring it down, and then he spare for their misdeeds. Lord, in thy day of vengeance, try them, and visit thee who they employ them, and pass no in thy mercy by them, nor hear their prayer, but for thy people's sake, destroy them, and then he spare. But Lord, remember me and mine, my mercy is temporal and divine, that I for gear and grace may shine, excelled by name. No, oh, the glory will be thine. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Who shall say that fortune is in? While the star of hope she leaves him. some passion and I like to be around men who like women Robert Burns from all of his poetry from his songs from the stories of his life loved human beings and I love him for it it's very exciting for me to to be here, to be at the Bachelors Club, which I know he founded for just such meetings as this without us. Yes, yes. but about us. But about us, <laughs> yes, always. So you don't think he did harm to women? I don't. Mm -hmm. I really you don't. Think he didn't use women or abuse women? I think he used women. Mm -hmm. But I think women used him, too. Yeah, I think so, too. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, oh, my goodness, if we have any health about us, we also want to mm. have a little use out of a man or two, you know? <laughs> he was triumphantly a man of his time, but he didn't transcend that time. And mm. he was just as bad as, as lots of men at the time were. Mm -hmm. um, and, and for me, the, there's a definite difference between behaviour, which maybe in our terms now we would describe as laddish behaviour, and behaviour which is caddish. Um, Ooh, he, I like that. Let me write that like <laughs> down. <laughs> he had a joy in women. Mm. He just had a joy in, in the nature of things. He was like pre-Lawrence, I think, you know? Mm. And, uh, and that's what I love about him, that I think he, like you, he's a man I would have really had good fun with. Yes. Not, not wanting to <clears throat> let Burns off the hook completely, though, the, the price exacted from Highland Mary Campbell, the price exacted from Jean Armour, whom he kept hanging around for years waiting for him to, to make good the promise he had made her, um, the, 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 the children that he fathered in and out of wedlock. That yeah. I don't think 
in understanding him, we should necessarily be entirely forgiving. He caused a heck of a lot of disruption round about him. There was a wonderful relationship between himself and his wife because he could come along to her with uh, the baby. From someone else? Yeah, from Anna Park. That's and him. without any apology or fuss, they were, look, here's another child for you. Yeah. And she took the two to her breast and she said, Ur Rab should have had two wives. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, Your I mean, friend, he, mm. he, he didn't go around raping and pillaging. No. The women no. were willing. Exactly, and this is what I want to say to you too, that especially uh, um, your statement that he kept poor Jean Armour hanging about for years. Nobody had a gun on her. Not quite. I and, know, no, um, no, no, no. I mean, <laughs> but I'm she saying, was under quite a bit of parental pressure. Yes, but, but uh, she still did pretty much. She did have the man she wanted. I do think it's important to think about um, Burns' love of, of liberty and the way that that sheer passion for... Um, people for uh, justice yes. and... Yes, I think that, I agree, I mean, I think that if you're passionate for a thing, mm -hmm. if you're a rounded person, if you have balance, then you're passionate about things, about love, about sex, about appetites of all sorts, and certainly about liberty. His passion was what caused him to collect and write all those songs. And at the end of his life, when he was living in Dumfries, he wrote a really beautiful song um, called Wantonness, which is a kind of summation of how he was feeling about women and about his life. Do you remember it? Yes. Please um, sing it. Well, I, I'm not, not a singer. Okay. Wantonness forever more. Wantonness has been my ruin. Yet for all my dool and care, it's wantonness forever. Now I will never, that will never leave my ears and my heart. It is said that Robert Burns wrote Tam O'Shanter in one day. It seems to me absolutely impossible. Yet, I do know that inspiration can come with such intensity that it informs the writer or the artist that this piece wants to be said now. Tam tent his reason or the gather and rules it. We'll then cut his arm, and in an instant, all was dark. For scarcely had him argued rallied, when out the hellish legion sallied. Now, do thy speed the up, Miss Meg, and win the key stain o' the brig. There at them thou thy tail may toss, a running stream they dare not cross. But, there the key stain she could make, the faint a tail she had to shake. For Nanny, far before the rest, hard upon noble Maggie pressed. She flew at Tam with furious eddle. But little was she Maggie's metal. Ye spring brought off her Mr. Hill, but left behind her own great deal. The carlin cloaked her by the rump, and left poor Maggie scarce a stump. Now go oh, this tale of truth shall read, help man or mother son that heed, that when to drink you are inclined, or ye may buy the joys, or dear, remember Tam O'Shanter's mayor. <laughs> Oh, my God. 
Thank you. Thank you. That's almost my favorite poem. I thank you. Oh, it's bra. I really believed that we were going to make a film about Robert Burns as seen and experienced by me, Maya Angelou. But what I've found, what I've learned, is that Robert Burns belonged to me. I thought I knew that before we began, but now I really know that a man's a man, for I that, and I that, and I that. seen the day that treason thus could sell us. My all grey he'd had line and flame we Bruce and loyal Wallace. But Perth and poor tell my last hour I'll mack this Declaration were bought and sold for English gold. It's like a parcel of rogues in a nation.